Alright everybody, welcome back. The purpose of this video is to really show you two things. One, I want to take a look at some of the things in Photoshop CS2 that kind of tripped me up a little bit as I started learning the product and hopefully I can save you guys some of the time that I spent learning this and, and give you some techniques for uh, the way things are done in CS2. And another thing I hope to accomplish here is there's a lot of small undocumented features that a lot of people don't know, especially with the new features in CS2. So we'll just take a look at a couple of them here. All right, so the first thing that I've seen a lot of questions on is people say, when I control click on the layer, I don't get, it. if you control click on the layer in previous versions of Photoshop, it will put a selection around all the pixels that are on that layer. So if I control click on, let's say this layer here with the red bar, you can see if I can show and hide it. If I control click on it, I'll get a selection around that red bar. Well, it indeed still works. The difference here is what some people are doing is they're control clicking on the layer thumbnail itself. So right now I'm holding down my control key, the command key on the Mac, and I'm trying to click on this layer here. And you can see it selects it, but it actually doesn't put a selection, a marquee selection around that layer. It targets it, I should say, but there's no selection. And that's because you need to watch out where you click. So if I click on the layer, the gray area around the layer, that's going to actually target that layer or select it. Select it as in uh, selecting it in the layers palette. If I control click on the layer mat or the, the mat, or I should say the mask, if I control click on the thumbnail in the layers palette here, that's what puts the selection around that layer. So this comes in handy when, let's say I have this layer selected and I want to choose all three of these. Well, I control click here and I control click here and that selects all three of them. Whereas if I had that layer selected and I go try to control click on the mask, you're seeing I'm getting a selection put around that bar here. And that's not what I want to do if I want to select multiple layers. So just remember, it matters now where you click on the layer when you select it. All right, let's deselect here. And let's take a look at another cool feature I found. And that is, let's say, notice I've got an image here. And then I've got two below it, so I can show and hide these just to get different um, ideas of when I'm working with my files here. Well, let's say I have that one, and I got this image on top of it, but it's not, it doesn't have that same mask that the images below it have. Well, what's cool about Photoshop CS2 is if I alt-click on the layer thumbnail here, and I just drag it up, that actually duplicates that mask onto the layer. I can also just move it up. So if I just click and move, it actually moves it up. Or again, if I Alt or Option click and I drag, it actually duplicates the mask. And now you can see the mask applies to that image. It's not taking up my whole, uh, it's not taking up the whole space here. So very cool effect. Oh, let's see. Another thing that tripped me up is locking layers. So let's go back down to these three layers here. And let's say we want to lock all three of them. If I click on one of them, I can actually come up here and I can click on the lock transparent pixel icon and I can lock each one individually if I wanted to. But let's say I want to lock all three at the same time. So I'll click on the bottom one, then control, or I'm going to shift click on the third one here. So now all three are selected. Notice that's not available anymore. I can't lock all three of them. Well, the way Adobe's done this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense and unfortunately it's not going to be changed anytime soon. So we're going to have to bear with it. But if you choose layer, and you scroll down, you can see lock layers. Select lock layers, and now you can choose to lock the transparency. So you actually kind of got to go through the menu if you want to do this. So I'll click on OK, and now it actually locks all the layers. Now, the way you unlock these is just as ludicrous as the way you lock them, even more so, because in order to unlock the layers, you actually have to go to layer lock layers, which really doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but again, we're stuck with it, so choose layer lock layers and just uncheck that box click on OK and now you've unlocked all those layers at the same time again don't shoot the messenger I did not make this I'm just showing you guys how to get around in it so alright let's take a look at a couple of other cool features here uh, for Windows users you guys will really like this one and what I'm going to do here I'm going to minimize my Photoshop window and look what happens I can actually drag this window independent of my main Photoshop interface. So if you're a Windows user, this is new for you. You, could, you didn't used to be able to do that. So you can actually drag this window outside of that main interface here and work with it independently. What this means is now Photoshop CS2 or Creative Suite 2 supports dual monitors in this aspect. So now I could take this window, I could drag it over onto another monitor, and then I could have all my palettes and everything working in this monitor here. Also, Bridge 
works with dual monitor support too. So I can have Bridge open on one monitor, and I can have Photoshop CS2 open on the other one. So let's get my image size back to normal here. My window size, there we go. And I've got my window back here. All right, so let's take a look at another cool feature, and that's when you're using warp. So I've got this image here. Let's zoom in a little bit, and let's say I want to warp this logo onto this awning, and I'm not going to spend too much time doing it. I just want to show you a nice uh, trick here. Let's zoom out just a step. Okay, so I press Control or Command T. That brings me into free transform mode. That's the shortcut, actually. That's there is really no keyboard shortcut to get into warp mode. If you look here, edit transform warp. There's no keyboard shortcut for it. So if I want to get into it, I can press Control or Command T and then look up in the options bar over here. There's an option that says switch between free transform and warp modes and that gets cut off on your screen. But if you hover your mouse right over there, it says switch between free transform and warp. So if I click that, now I'm in warp mode. So you can kind of think of Control or Command T as the shortcut key to get into warp mode. And now I can go about and I can start warping my image here and I'm going to really make it look ugly. And if I want to get back into free transform mode, let's say I need to scale this down, just click on that button again, and now I can scale this down. So a lot of people don't know that, and you, you find that you're in warp mode, and you think you're stuck there, because maybe you want to rotate this or move it around, and you escape out of there, and, and you really don't know how to get around in it. And they really didn't do a good job of documenting that, but that's how you do it. So just remember, go into war, uh, free transform mode, and then you can just toggle between warp and free transform. And let's take a look at one more here. And I don't have my, I'm going to show you one with vanishing points. So let's take a look at my stock photos folder. And I've got a good image that will take care of this. And let's say we're working, I think I've got a truck in here that works good for this. If I could just find it, and it is just not where to go. There we go. That's not the one I wanted, but we're going to have to settle for that one because I can't seem to find Ah, oh, there's the one I wanted. Okay, so now I've got this truck open. Let's zoom in. We'll go filter, vanishing point, and it's going to open up the huge vanishing point dialog box any second now. Maybe it won't open up. Maybe vanishing point's gone. No, it's not gone. Okay, so now we're in vanishing point, and I've decided I need to create my perspective grid. So I'm going to click once. I'm going to click, and you know, as I get down here, I really can't see that. I really can't see how accurate I'm being. Well, I could always press Control or Command Plus, and that zooms in for me, but see how this got screwed up? I, I may actually lose my, my cursor here. Well, if I hold down the X key, that zooms in real quick for me. I don't even have to take my hand off, the, off my mouse, because if I did Control or Command Plus, I would actually have to take my hand off the mouse being right-handed here. So, And again, hold down the X key, and that zooms in, and that lets me place that point. So pretty cool trick there. Just remember, press the X key, and that gives you a quick zoom in. When you let go of it, you're back to normal. So hope you guys enjoyed this tip, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks.